morning. Um, let me just change the light here a little bit. So right up, there we go. Um, so uh, here's a quick little walkthrough on how I'm going to uh, cut my spline in this part. So this, uh, let's get this out of the way here. So I need to make a replica of this. Those have been following along. It's old news. Um, Barry Journal gone. So anyways, I've been in the process of uh, refabricating or fabricating a one from scratch. So uh, I'm getting pretty close to almost done here. Um, the only thing I'm missing uh, is probably the most critical part is the spline, the ID spline. So uh, uh, getting tooled up to create that spline, it's been a little bit of a, a journey, but uh, I'm nearly there. So uh, here's a quick walkthrough on how I plan on doing it. So uh, I'm going to put these aside for a second. And... Uh, A little while ago, I picked up uh, a 5C call-in indexer, and uh, I got it for a song at, a, at an auction, and uh, uh, I cleaned it up. I haven't used it for anything quite yet. Sorry for the exposure problems there. Um, I haven't used it for anything quite yet, so this is going to be the first kick at the can. Uh, and I stumbled across this little Bison 3-jaw uh, that actually had uh, a Morse taper number 3 on the back end of it, but I found a 5C adapter. So, I thought... Perfect. This is going to work out just grand. Um, so this is what I'm planning to use on to index my part. Uh, so now I'm going to plunge cut the spline with the actual mill I'm making the part for. Um, I don't need uh, the uh, I don't need to, any drive train because I'm doing some plunge, cut, plunge cutting. But uh, the trick here was uh, I've got the uh, the spindle all reassembled, but obviously it still spins and I need that to stay rigid. So what I needed to come up with is a way to uh, to lock the spindle. So uh, the other night uh, I whipped this together quick. So this was a piece of uh, four, four inch ID route stock aluminum. Um, so I made this just to sit right up in here. Um, it's got a little shoulder there. It sits right in and then under the same chunk of uh, the offcuts I quickly scap this together. So now this is just a key. Uh, it's 200 hour cross and it sits inside that spline. So now the idea is this sits up in there when I get it. There we go. Just like so. Now, the plan is to, uh, I'll get to this gap in a minute. The plan is to clamp this down onto the head and now I've got a spindle lock. And once I fasten this down and it's hold, hold straight, um, I, I, I was off the mark a little bit here. Um, I guess I could have used something bigger, but all I had was four inch stock, so they got what you work with what you got. I'm going to take a, can, a couple can quests, and I'm just going to clamp that down, good to go. So now, the reason, and I, I made this shoulder with that depth for a reason, um, my throw here, unlock that. So now let's see that bottom's out. Now, I don't know if you can pick it up quite not or not, but uh, right near the tail end, this does a little twist. The casting isn't very clean right here. So on the very last, uh, a little less than half an inch, it just jogs a little bit. So that was going to throw off my alignment. And it might not actually screw up the cut of the spline, depending on how I do it, because I think the spline's only an inch and a half. This has got uh, two and a half inches, I think, throw. But uh, regardless, what I did was is I, I made that shoulder to, to depth. So now... When I get it close, when I get it close, I actually I'll hit the uh, what am I biting on here? I'm biting on something. When I get close, see so yeah, I'll hit I'll hit that shoulder, and it'll prevent me from hitting that squirrely part. So, anyways, that's how that works. Bob's your uncle. So now I'm not quite there yet. The way I'm gonna set this thing up, I put this back up. Gonna, oh, I know what it is. I haven't completely assembled that yet. That's the fine feed for the quill. So it must be spinning. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So now that that's up and out of the way, I dip it, step back. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to take this guy with this, uh, like I said, the bison chuck on the 5C fitting. And I'm going to flip it just like that. Now I'm forced to bring it out here a little bit because of the. Uh, the quick lock, but anyway. So it mounts to my table, yay, and yay. And uh, there you go. So what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna 
drop in there. Finger tight for now. And uh, I'm just gonna slide that over. And there it is. So I'm gonna put my tool in call it, and I'm just gonna plunge. Da -de -da -de -da. Multiple passes, uh, make a pass, uh, dial in the table, pass, dial in the table. And then when I'm done, uh, for those who haven't used these guys, um, you flick that out, it disengages a pin, okay? And then, I don't know if I can this one hand or not. No, maybe not. There we go. So now I'm off, and there's multiple pin settings back in here. And it's a standard, uh, and what am I doing here, six? Yeah, six passes. So ge geometrically, it's, it's it's fine. I'll match them with the pattern. I haven't set it up yet. So you just turn this until you get to, uh, sorry, I'm pushing down at the same time here. So if I can get to click in or not. Oh. There, we go. there we go. And then it locks in the next spot. I'll have to set up a tripod when I do the work. But anyways, so then uh, I just set up the pins. So I do my first one, and then I ratchet over to the other one, and it drops in. It's 100%. It's locked in. Do the next one. Bob's your uncle. I, had a, I also had a rotary table that I could have used. Um, fortunately, I had, the, I had the space. It's close. I only had about four inches there, a little over four inches. So it was really close. But uh, this is by far the most accurate setup I've got. So let me step back here a little bit. So uh, anyway, so hopefully this is going to work out. Like I said, uh, now that I've got that part in, my last bit is to shape my tool appropriately. And then I can cut the, uh, the spline. Okay. So I just thought I'd take a second to show you how, the, uh, how these hardened indexers work. Um, so I've already done the other half of the pattern. So what I'm looking for here, there's the spline I'm trying to recreate. So I'm looking at north and south, and then splitting the distance into two. Well, it's three, depending on how you look at it. So I need to cut the, this valley, that valley, so these two splines, and then two more. So now, fortunately, uh, this plate that's in here allows me to do that. So now I've done the, other, done the other side. So here's the north position, right buried up into there. I don't know if you can see that or not. So when you back out, there's these grub screws, and when you back out the grub screw, that's a, an indexing position for the locking pin. So now, the way this is sitting right now, I've got north, and south is good, but now I've got three points in between, which isn't what I want. I want two points in between. So now, if you count them out, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now, what Basically what I'm doing is, is I need, so I've got north, count three, one, two, three. So I could screw this one in, because the three represents my spacing in between my splines. And then the fourth, I back out, if I didn't get it too tight in there, when I put it back together. Back that all the way out, and there's a collar it prevents me from going too far. So then I gotta count. So that's one, two, three in, and then one out. So one, two, oh, I gotta put that one in. See, so now I don't know if you can see that or not. As I'm turning this in, I'm pushing out that locking pin because that's the one it's sitting in at the present time. So anyways, let's turn back to one, two, three. This one's got to come out. Back out lightly against that collar. So, starting out from the top. North, one, two, three, in, one out. One, two, three, in, one out. This one's got to go in. One, two, three, in, and then south. So double check. North, one, two, three, in, or sorry, from north, which is out, 
one, two, three, in, then out. One, two, three, in, and then out. And one, two, three, in, and then south. So that actually matters, matches that pattern. So I've got one in, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, south. So there's my pattern. So now, when it comes time to actually use this thing, I crank it up, and it locks into position. And then when I'm done the process, I pull the pin out, just get it off axis a little bit, and then the pin's spring loaded. But it won't lock in until it gets to the next spot. Here it comes. Boom. I do I repeat my steps for my spline. Pull that out. Get her off axis. Boom. Next one. So that gives me a surefire way to accurately index and the bonus here is, is I can get back to where I need to be. So I can cut both sides of this, take a measurement, and if this isn't what I need it to be, I can get back to the spot accurately and just go take a few more passes, open it up just a little bit more. So there you go. I just thought I'd show you that quick. Okay. So uh, I've got the color closer uh, set up for the division, and I've got it mounted vertically. Um, it's nice and stable. Look at uh, it only mounts in two spots, but it doesn't really need all that much. And the next order of business was uh, actually tramming the head. Um, this is the first time I've actually tried to do anything with the mill since I've uh, put it in place. So uh, the head can't, and uh, I didn't know how accurately. I don't know if you can see the line. There's a there's a little line in here. And on here, it's trying to, anyways. So, I didn't know there's a line that's marked from the factory and it's supposed to line up here, and I didn't know how accurate it was going to be. And it's uh, it's off by a little bit again, I can't really focus in on it, but I'd say it's off by a tenth of a degree, maybe. But, anyway, so what I did was is I, I brought it all the way down, all right, I brought the coil all the way down, and I set up a dial, and I'm reading, and I was going up, up and down with the table. Is leaving this fixed and the idea is as the tampa goes up and down it's going to read any deviation in the in the quill and uh, uh through the mm, not quite three inches maybe three inches worth of travel I'm, I'm deviating maybe half a thou so for what i'm doing that's more than enough i can't expect this thing to keep uh, perfect tolerances or for that matter my bad stand and everything else is loosey-goosey so anyways that was the first step next step i'll get that out of the way and now I'm going to come off the quill, now that I've got a reference, I'm going to come off the quill and I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to make sure this is sitting right, and then I'm going to center it. When I'm done centering it, then uh, I can get my tool in there, line everything up, and do a trial run with my divisions, make sure that's going to line up the way I need it to, and then I can uh, start doing my plunges. So uh, I'll come back when I get the next part of the setups uh, done. I just need to get this out of the way, but I wanted to have it in place just to show you what I was doing. All right. Here we are back again. Uh, <clears throat> my camera died. <laughs> I'm not used to shooting with a camera, and uh, apparently it just sucks up the battery. So, anyways, um, I, I used the stand uh, and I went off the the table, and I trued up the shaft so it wasn't doing this in the chuck anymore. So now I've got the table square. I've got the more importantly, I've got my workpiece square to the table into the quill. And now the next step was to to center it underneath the. Uh, the spindle. So uh, normally you would see uh, this type of uh, dial uh, for for centering uh, centering on a hole, but unfortunately I, I didn't have enough room to manipulate this. Like I, I am completely maxed out. I got my knee all the way down, and just for this uh, this process, I've got the uh, the spindle all the way up, and I'm just squeaking her in there. So I, I I'm spinning it, I'm just spinning it here, and uh, I'm using my little stab in the back, and uh, I've got it down to, uh, I've got it down to, I'm within a thou all the way around, which is golden as far as I'm concerned. So anyways, that's ready to go. I've got everything set up. Um, now I'm going to lock down the X and uh, I'm just going to do all my work off the Y and I'm going to get my cutter in there. And, uh, I don't know if I can pick up my camera or my phone to take some video. I've done it before, but I need two hands. Well, maybe I don't need two hands for all this. Well, the next step. Um, what I'm going to need to do, there's one more process. I'm going to put my tooling in there and I'm going to make sure my tooling is bang on square. 
and then I need to lock it in position. And uh, what I came up with to do that is this guy here. So this, which has got a big shoulder on it, right? Just a disc. And then that little doodad there, that little key, sits in that spline. So what ends up happening is this slips in. I might not go on there with that. Uh, turn with me for a second here. Yeah, I might not go on there with the, uh, oh, maybe. I'm not too sure. Yeah, the, uh, the draw bars mess up me up. So that, Cause I'm on a high there, but anyways. So anyways, uh, that slips down onto the spline and it sits on top of the head just like that. And I'm gonna clamp that down into position. So I'm gonna slip this into place and uh, I'll put my tooling in and I'll come off the table off the table, and I'll, I'll read the, the cutting edge of my tool and I'll look for the high. And as soon as I find it, I'll clamp down that disc and then that holds everything perfectly aligned. So I'm dead nuts this way. So all my work will be adjusted this way. And uh, hopefully that'll be it. Um, sorry for the back and forth on the camera. I don't know if you'll be able to notice the production value change or what have you. But there we are. I'm getting real close. I'm at a point now where I'm going to have to start locking my little shop door here. I don't actually have a keyed, but my uh, kids like to run in here and play around and they just love yanking on the handle. So I'm going to have to lock everything down and I'm going to have to lock my door because uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually get to cutting this today. Hopefully. But uh, at any rate, I'm getting close and uh, I'll take a, a bit of the process. Talk to you soon.